Okay, so thank you very much for the introductions and thanks a lot uh, to the organizers for, uh, for the invitation. So uh, today I would like to talk about some um, uh, some operations, uh, sorry, on, the, on on loops and surfaces, which have been introduced by uh, by Vladimir Vladimir Turev in the, uh, some time ago, and I would like to explain uh, for one of these because there are two operations. I would like to explain for one of these operations. Uh, a relation with Greenfield associators. And so uh, the first part of my talk will be uh, uh, some review and some explanations of these operations. Okay. And uh, so uh, there are two operations. So the first one is, uh, is a kind of homotopy uh, version of the, self, of the uh, intersection form of the surface. So here the surface uh, is uh, oriented, it should have some non-empty boundary, and the fundamental group pi is uh, based at the point on the boundary. And so the intersection pairing uh, is um, an operation, a bilinear operation on the group algebra of, of the fundamental group. And so being bi bilinear, uh, it's enough to uh, define it for two elements, a and b of pi, and for this, we represent uh, A and B by some loops. So the, the official base point is here, star, but uh, we, we, uh, we represent A by a loop alpha, and we uh, push a little bit the base point on the left. And similarly for beta, its base point is put a little bit on the right, and we require that alpha and beta are in generic positions. And then uh, eta AB is a sum over uh, all intersection points of alpha and beta. So there is a sign epsilon p alpha beta which is uh, defined uh, in the usual way. And for every point p, I can define a, a loop, beta star, which appears in, re in red in the picture. So I, I start from star, go to L. Then I follow alpha until I reach the point p. And at p, I change the way and follow beta and then back to, uh, to the base point. So it's not difficult to check that this, this map, uh, this binary map is well defined. And uh, the theorem is that this pairing uh, detects the pairs of two elements, A, B, which can be represented by disjoint groups. Okay. So that's the first operation. Uh, so I, I will put it. Sorry? Yeah. Yes, yes, this is what I mean. And so that was for the, second, uh, the first operation. So now the second operation is a self-intersection operation. And the most convenient way to, to define it is now to use not pi, not the fundamental group of the surface, but the fundamental group of the unit um, tangent bundle of the surface. And so I denote it by pi back. And so then uh, the self-intersection map, mu vec, is a linear map from the group algebra of pi vec to the group algebra of pi. And um, so how is it defined? So I take an arbitrary element of i vec. I can always uh, represent it by uh, an immersed uh, closed curve uh, with um, uh, uh, behavior for which, which, which is like this in the neighborhood of the base point. And uh, um, I now take the, the sum over all self intersection points of alpha. So again, there is a sign which is explained here and a loop. Uh, so alpha star p uh, composed, uh, concatenated with alpha p star. And for technical reason, reasons, sorry, I had uh, this a, and a just means. Um, uh, the image of AVEC in the fundamental group, if I forget the, uh, the framing. Okay? Like, uh, this case uh, considered as a limit case of the previous one, so that's the two points coincide. Uh, uh, maybe, but there is a relation which, which I'm going to explain, but I, it's not exactly the way you, you say it. Um, okay, and so the, the result is that this map detects the element of AVEC that can be represented by, uh, by simple loops. So here, um, uh, telling you the story, I'm a little bit simplifying because uh, in the paper of Vladimir from the 78, uh, it was not defined like this. It was not defined using 
uh, buyback. So that this sum has to be truncated in order to get the invariance under the first uh, Rennmeister move. And this version of the map uh, appears in a paper by Berman and Polyak, where they, they use it to, uh, to generalize the Whitney index formula from the disk to arbitrary surfaces. Okay, but that's more or less equivalent to what Vladimir did in the 70s. Sorry? Which you, sorry? You, ah, the U sigma is to uh, Because otherwise, uh, you, you won't have the invariance under the first semester move when you have uh, something like that. You would, you would like to have the, the invariance under this move. And for this, then you would have to truncate the sum and to um, not consider the point P such that the complementary loop is, is non-trivial, is not, is not neuromotopic. That's the reason. Okay, so now to explain the relation between mu vec and eta, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, just a little bit of terminology which belongs to uh, the world of op algebras. So let P be a map of involutive op algebras from A theta to A, and there is this, so a definition, just a definition. So I, I uh, uh, Vladimir and I call a Fox pairing a binary map pro from A cos to A, which uh, is a derivation in these in this two senses. So there is a derivation rule for the first argument and a derivation rule for the right argument. And if you remember uh, Stefan's talk from this morning, uh, these are Fox derivations. Uh, left or right, uh, depending if uh, you consider the first or second arguments. So it's a kind of, uh, it's the same thing as the Fox free derivative. So that's the definition, but so now if we fix uh, such a rule, uh, we make, uh, we, uh, we state a second definition, so now we map Q from A to A. It, Uh, no, it's not important, but it's just in that the antipod, the square of the antipod is identity. For instance, any co-commutative of algebra is this, is, uh, has this property, and uh, it, will, uh, it will be enough for us. So a quasi-derivation uh, rule by rho is a map Q from A tilde to A, uh, which is not quite a derivation, but the defect to be a derivation is controlled by the fox pairing rule. And here, A and B uh, denote the image of A tilde and B tilde by, by P, okay? And so, so, so far, I have just used uh, the multiplication and the, the co-units, the augmentation of the, uh, the of algebra. And if I now um, allow myself to use co-products and antipods, I can do some more construction, which I won't explain today. But basically, um, from a Fox pairing, you can also construct a bracket, not uh, on A, but on A modulo the subspace of the submodule generated by commutators. And sometimes this bracket will be a Lie bracket. And this, a second construction, which I will not detail, is that if you have a, a quasi derivation, you can always uh, uh, construct a co bracket on the same space. Um, okay, so let us now come back to, uh, to the surface. So the surface sigma, so there is a uh, bundle map uh, from U sigma to, uh, to sigma. So it induces homomorphism at the level of, uh, of group algebras. And so that's an homomorphism of involutive of algebras. And uh, so uh, Vladimir, so the same paper, uh, proved, so not in the, with this terminology, but uh, it's uh, completely equivalent. So first of all, that eta is a Fox pairing. So it's a kind of, uh, of Fox B derivation. And second, a mu vec is a quasi derivation ruled by eta. Okay, so now we can uh, wonder what are the auxiliary um, maps which we can derive from these two uh, operations. So for this, we have to consider the group Z pi modulo commutators. But since Z pi is a group algebra, this means uh, the, the module freely generated by conjugacy classes, or it's the same free multiple classes of loops uh, in the surface. 
Okay. And the bracket, the bracket construction, which I have not uh, detailed today, uh, gives you from uh, QRF sparing eta the Goldman Lee bracket. Okay. And similarly, if you apply this uh, general construction uh, belonging to up, the up algebra world to MUVEC, what you get is uh, the QRF bracket. And these two constitute a bi algebra, a Lee bi algebra. Okay. So the Goldman bracket uh, that I am referring here uh, on the Zipa check is uh, the, the, the operation which controls the, uh, the Poisson structure derived from the symplectic Atiyabot structure on this modulized space when G is a general linear group. And there are also uh, some other uh, variants of these Poisson brackets which corresponds to other groups. And all of them are determined by, uh, by eta. Okay. And finally, because this map, uh, the bundle of projection map is surjective, it's clear that uh, the map muvec will also determine eta. Because it's a quasi-derivation ruled by eta. Okay. So in some sense, the most fundamental operation is this map uh, muvec. Okay. And so today, I would like to, uh, to explain how uh, we can get some kind of formality results for these operations. And first of all, I will recall uh, what I mean by formality uh, uh, at the level of fundamental groups. OK, so I will recall some uh, uh, general basic facts about free groups. So let F be a free group. And let us work now with a field K of uh, zero characteristic. Then um, oops. Uh, uh, I consider the group algebra of F. And inside, there is the augmentation idea, which consists of the, 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 the linear combination of elements of F with sum of coefficient is zero. And I can consider powers of, of uh, of, of I, which, so which defines the filtration on the group algebra KF. And the first basic fact, uh, which uh, dates back to, to Magnus uh, for the free group, is that there is a canonical isomorphism of graded up algebras between uh, the uh, graded algebra associated to this filtration and T of H. So here, T of H just means the tensor algebra generated by the first homology group of F. OK. And um, the second fact, uh, which is also due to Magnus, I think, uh, maybe not in this uh, terminology, but essentially, is that uh, more than that, uh, you have, um, uh, there exists some isomorphism of complete of algebras between key F at. So here, the at means that I take the, the completion with respect to this filtration, OK? And here, T et at just means the degree completion of TH. And I can also require that uh, this isomorphism induce the canonical one at the level of, uh, of, uh, um, of uh, at the graded level. OK, so how do we construct such isomorphisms? So using some variations of the Magnus expansions. So an expansion of F means a map from the free group F to the degree completion of, of, of TH with these three properties. So first of all, it's multiplicative. Then it should, be, it should take group-like uh, values. And for any element X of F, uh, theta of X should be 1 plus the homology class of X plus some higher degree term. So for instance, if uh, you, you pick your basis, and the free group F. Uh, ah, sorry, GR means graded. I take the graded algebra associated to the. Yes. Yes, yeah, sorry. So if I pick a basis of F, I can, for instance, consider the map theta, uh, which sends any generator xi to the formal uh, exponential of its homology class. So which means 1 plus the homology class of xi plus uh, 1 over 2 
the homology class of x i square plus etc. So that's a basic uh, example. So here, what we remem remember is that uh, um, this complete of algebra is isomorphic to the degree completion of its graded. So some people then say that the free, a free group is one formal. And the question is, uh, to which extent uh, we can generalize uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, formality to uh, the, the loop operations? OK, and here I forget to tell you that, uh, of course, uh, uh, if you have such a theta, uh, in order to get such an isomorphism, you just extend by, by linearity and then by continuity to the, to the IAD completion. OK? So there are many such isomorphisms, and the question is, uh, do there exist some good ones which make the loop operations formal? And to illustrate this problem, I will recall the first uh, result uh, in this direction. Sorry? I mean, one of the operations which I defined before, so the operation eta, the operation uvec, this kind of intersection operations. Okay. And I will, I will start with the Goldman bracket. And so this result is, uh, of, is due to Kawazumi and Kuno, so uh, from Tokyo. And uh, it's about, um, which I consider to be the most interesting case, the case of a compact surface with some genus and with one boundary component. So recall that pi is a fundamental group, H is then the first homology group of surface. And there is a particular element of pi, which is just given by uh, the boundary curve. Okay. And another uh, particular thing is um, the, inter the homology intersection, intersection form, omega. So this form is uh, skew-symmetric. It's non-degenerate. So by duality, you can also uh, regard it as a skew-symmetric bitensor. Which, sorry, I don't know what I did. OK, and so I denote it uh, still by omega. It was here. And so uh, I will say that an expansion is symplectic as if um, uh, it sends the boundary curve of mu to the exponential of minus omega. So where now omega is regarded as, uh, as a degree two element of the tensor algebra. Okay. So for instance, if you uh, you, you pick um, a basis of meridians and parallel on the surface, so you get the basis of, of pi. You can do this, uh, this construction. So this map will not be symplectic, but using the baker combinator formula, you can uh, modify it degree after degree in order to satisfy the symplectic conditions. OK. And so what uh, Kawazumi and Kuno proved is that uh, for any symplectic expansion, so you have uh, the isomorphism uh, theta hat, no theta, just to call it theta, uh, from uh, the um, IAD completion of KF to T at H. And I can also consider the map induce modulo commutators. And the result is that uh, these isomorphisms maps uh, Goldman's Lee bracket to the Konsevich Lee brackets. So the Konsevich Lee brackets is when you consider cyclic tensors. So a cyclic tensor is, a, is like a tensor but uh, in the form of a wheel. So some H1, H2, H3, etc., Hn. And if you take uh, another one, Another cyclic tensor, K1, uh, K2, K3, and so on. So the Konsevich bracket is a sum of all ways of uh, gluing, of contracting these two tensors. So contracting means that I choose two legs, for instance, Hn on K3. And I contract like this, so to get new wheels. And I multiply by omega of Hn K3. So the sum of all possible ways of doing so. 
Okay, so that was the result, and this can be uh, thought of as a formality result. So it tells you that the, the Goldman B brackets is isomorphic to its graded version. And it holds true for any symplectic expansion. So uh, after this, uh, Vladimir and I so generalized this to the homotopy intersection pairing. And starting from there, we need to consider uh, Bernoulli uh, numbers. So let S, let S be the formal power series defined by, by this. So it is given by Bernoulli numbers. Um, and so uh, we prove that, again, for any uh, symplectic expansion, the um, homotopy intersection pairing, eta, uh, after completion, corresponds through any symplectic expansion to the sum of two operations. So the first one, which I denote by this purely rho omega, is just the concatenation of tensors followed by the contraction with omega. So this operation is graded. It shifts a degree by minus two, but it is graded. And the other one, rho s omega, is not graded. It's a correcting term. And it's what we call an inner Fox pairing. So if you have two arguments, uh, h and k, you just multiply your element s omega on the left hand side, on the right hand side, by the two arguments. So that's a particular case of a Fox pairing. So you have to think of this result as a quasi-formality result. So this is omega, for this purely omega is a formal version of eta. It is eta at the graded level. Sorry. And rho s omega, which is given by Bernoulli numbers, is a correcting term. So you have a quasi-formality result. So is it a bilinear or is it a sensibility of Sorry? So the eta, which I guess corresponds to the section pairing. Yes. Bilinear or sensible linear? Like the linear no, no, it's bilinear. It's bilinear. Why? Usually, the section pairs tend to be sensible linear. Yes, but we can modify them by an antipode to make them bilinear. It's, ju it's just a technical. Uh, I agree that uh, maybe it's not natural sure to consider sesquilinear, but you can make them bilinear by applying the antipode. Um, okay, so then the question is. Can we do, do we have this kind of result for now, the self-intersection operations, like QRF co-bracket and the map UVEC? So Kuno uh, did some computations uh, with a computer, and he, he obtained uh, a symplectic expansion uh, which does not send uh, the Goldman co-bracket to its graded version. So you can't, you can't get uh, the formality result for Goldman co-bracket for any symplectic expansion. So this means that among symplectic expansions, there should exist some more clever one, some more subtle ones. Okay. And so this is the case of a surface with uh, of genus G is uh, for me uh, too complicated to, uh, uh, to this day. So I consider uh, a simpler case. So now I will consider uh, not a surface of genus G, but a disk, just a disk with punctures. And it is still uh, interesting to, to consider. So again, I did not buy pi, the fundamental group of, of, of the surface. Uh, so H is the first homology group. And I choose, uh, and in fact this choice is not important, but I choose a counterclockwise group around each puncture. So theta 1, theta p. So there are some homology classes, z1, etc., zp. And the sum of the zi, z, is just on, uh, the homology class of the uh, outer boundary of the puncture disk. OK? And then we have to, uh, to formulate uh, an analog of a symplectic expansion in this case. So uh, I will call this a special expansion. So a special expansion means uh, um, an expansion in the previous, uh, as I previously defined, with now two properties. So the first property is that each zeta high should be mapped to a conjugate of the exponential of its homology class. And the conjugacy should be done with a group-like element, like this. And uh, the second condition, like in the symplectic case, is a peripheral condition. I require that u goes to the exponential of z. 
Okay. And uh, again, using the Baker Campbell Torf formula, it's not difficult to, to check that, uh, to prove that uh, special expansions exist. Um, but um, recall that I would like to consider this uh, MUVEC map, so I need to consider the unit, so, so the fundamental group of the unit tangent bundle. And in the case of a disk, it's just the free product, the free product of pi by, by z, because I can just fix a non singular vector field and compute the, the winning number with respect to this vector field. So I get uh, here, a, I will not uh, detail this, but I have a sequence of canonical isomorphisms. So there is a, a frame version of special expansions. And so in this case, uh, it, uh, it consists in embedding the group pi back into this uh, uh, completed tensor product. So there is a, the, the degree completion of th and the, the ring of formal power series with one formal variable uh, c. Okay, so that's the definition, and now I would like to, uh, to explain or to review, because maybe you know this construction, how to construct such objects from uh, the Konsevich integral. Um, okay. Uh, and for this, I have to recall a few, uh, a few things about uh, the Konsevich integral. So I, my apologies, I will be a little bit sketchy about this, but I would like maybe for, for at least to, uh, to give the uh, the most important, um, the most important uh, definition. So first, I have to, t to recall you or to tell you uh, what is uh, the Dreyfus Cono Lie algebra. So it's a Lie algebra uh, given, defined by these presentations. So there is some generators T, I, J indexed by uh, pairs of distant integers I and J, and there are those two, uh, those two relations. And what is important to, to know is that this PBN, so it's an um, infinitesimal version of the pure group. And to be more specific, it's the Malsev Lie algebra of the pure break group on n strands. Okay, the Malsev Lie algebra. Or if you prefer, the exponential of this is the Malsev completion of the pure break group. And so uh, the next important uh, notion is the notion of a Dreenfeld associator. So what, what is this? Uh, so formally is, uh, first of all, so first of all, it's usually denoted by a capital phi, and it should be a group-like element of this uh, algebra of formal power series in two variables, A and B, which do not commute. And we require uh, one equation, the so Pentagon equation, and this pentagon equation, you see, it involves the generators T1, 2, T2, 3. So it's something which has to be written in the enveloping uh, algebra of the Lie algebra PB4. And so originally, in the uh, Dreenfeld definition, there were two more equations, the hexagon equations. And Fouchot proved that if you fix the degree two part of the, of the theater, then the hexagon are consequences of the pentagon. So it's enough to ask for the pentagon. And, uh, usually, uh, in, in uh, the theory of the Ryan, the CF theory, we, we choose this normalization. OK. So and with this phi, it's possible to construct a very powerful invariant. So it's called the Konsevich integral. So there are several constructions. Here, I'm referring to the, uh, the combinatorial construction. So what is this? It's, it's first of all an invariant of, uh, of framed oriented tangles. But not exactly those tangles should be called, uh, are called non-associative. Well, maybe I will give you one example. Uh, for instance, I can choose uh, uh, this one. like this. And uh, so you are, you are embedding, for, in this case, for instance, if I use my notation, it will be called gamma. My abstract one manifold will be the disjoint um, uh, union of, of uh, four intervals. And they should be oriented. Anyway. And non-associative just means that the boundary point on the top should come with a parenthesization. 
for instance, uh, this one. Okay. And then you, uh, there is a construction, so uh, Z gamma uh, will be an element of something which I, I won't define today, uh, the space of chord diagrams on B. And what is important to know is that this Z behaves well under a vertical going and horizontal going. So in a more fancy language, what you get is a kind of monoidal functor. Okay. And um, it's, uh, as an invariant, it is determined by the value it takes on a, a trivial three-strand uh, uh, three bread, but with a non-trivial parentheses on the top and on the right. And the value of Z on this bread, uh, on this parenthesized bread, should be the value of phi at the generators T12 and T23. So what we have uh, formally, it's um, an element of the enveloping Lie algebra of PB3, and there is a way to embed this Lie algebra, sorry, this, this, algebra, this algebra, into this space uh, which I have not defined. Okay. So what you, maybe we, we, we should first of all remember is that Z, the concession integral in its, in its combinatorial definitions, is determined by the choice of a phi. Okay? Uh, okay, so now uh, I'm going to tell you how to construct uh, a special expansion. So this construction is, uh, appears in the work of Avegir and Masbaum, where they relate the three level of the Konsevich integral to, uh, to uh, Milner and Ryan's. And in a stronger form, it uh, appears in the work of Alexeyev, uh, Enrique and Torosian, on the Kashiwara van problem. And I will come back to this uh, later. So what they prove is that uh, the Konsevich integral, Z, induce in a natural way a special expansion. And I'm going to sketch the, the construction. Uh, it's, the idea is, is, is simple. You consider the, the group on n strand pure breadth, PB and D2. And um, then, because Z is a, is a, is a functor, it uh, induces um, a representation of, uh, of this pure breadth group into um, the enveloping algebra of the Drinfeld Connolly algebra. So you, have to, you just have to choose a parenthesization of the point like, like, like here. And uh, as you know, um, a free group, so pi is a, is a fundamental group of a puncture disk, it's a free group. This can be regarded as a subgroup of a pure bread group. Uh, so it's just uh, the, the group of those pure breads which becomes in P plus one strands which become trivial if I delete the last strand. Okay, so that's the way you prove that the pure white group is a semi-dual product of three groups. And uh, if you apply Z to this kernel, because Z behaves well under deletion of components, you obtain uh, an element of the kernel of this algebra map. And this kernel is actually isomorphic in a canonical way to the degree completion of the tensor algebra of H. And their, their special expansion, theta z, is simply the composition uh, defined by this diagram. And then uh, one has to verify uh, all the axioms of the special expansion. Oh, is that clear? OK. So now I can tell you um, ah, something more. Yes, something, something I, was on, I, I will forget is that because uh, the constellation integral is an invariant of frame tangles, it's not difficult to adapt uh, this construction to get uh, a frame version of a special expansion. So I will just add this uh, little arrow to uh, remember that I'm considering uh, the pi one of the unit tangent model. Sorry, what is that? So what's happened to have a special expansion? What did it do for me? Why should I care? About special expansions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you right, uh, right after. Okay, so I want something which will replace symplectic expansions and which will, be, which will transform uh, the, the self-intersection operations into something uh, simple enough. And that's the next slide. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the result I wanted to, to present to you today. So the result is that uh, for, for any, uh, any choice of a drill-fail associator, uh, so this phi will produce for you a series, a small phi, with now just one formal variable. So there is a big phi and a small phi. 
So this small phi is not arbitrary. It's uh, a solution of this equation. And here I should recall you that S of x is this series defined by Bernoulli numbers. OK? And the result is that uh, uh, if I consider the constitution integral induced by this phi, so it gives me uh, two special expansions, a frame version and an on unframed version, and it will transform uh, two refs map mu vec into the sum of two simple operations, d on q. And now I have to tell you which are d on q. So d is uh, uh, the graded uh, level is a graded version of mu vec. So it's defined like this. So uh, I have to define it on, uh, on the element of this uh, tensor product. So it's linearly spanned by tensors with a power of c. And the most interesting case is when uh, this power of c is just 1. And in this case, the operation d can be thought of as a kind of self, uh, self contraction map. And here, I contract with this center dot. And this center dot is, in fact, a multiplication in the group H defined in terms of the generators by this formula. So as you can see, this operation uh, is, uh, uh, is graded. And uh, shifting, uh, it shifts some degrees, but it is graded. And um, uh, Q, so Q is, is a part which depends on phi. Q is just uh, the multiplication of your argument, H1 to the HM. By, so on one, with one side, you take 1 over 4 minus phi of z, phi of z, sorry. And for the other term, you multiply on the left by 1 over 4 plus phi of minus z. So this is a quasi-formality result for mu vec. So d is the formal version of mu vec. And again, there is a correcting term q. And this correcting term q depends on the choice of the asthetic, capital phi. OK? C is a formal variable, just a formal variable. And actually, it's, it's something, it's just here because we had to consider the frame version. But it's not, uh, it's not the most meaningful part, in fact. It's something you have to, uh, to deal with. Uh, OK. So uh, now I'm going to give some comments about this. On, after that, I will uh, sketch the proof of, of the theorem. So the first thing uh, I should tell you is that um, there is a work in progress by, uh, by four people, so Alexeyev, Kawazumi, and Kudo, and on knife. And uh, they show that uh, the same result, or uh, not the same, but uh, something similar, uh, holds true, in fact, if you replace Greenfeld associators by something more general, solutions of the Kashiwara van problem. Okay. And so, um, uh, yes, so there are some things similar. And uh, the second uh, remark is that as a consequence of the previous re result, you get a formality result for 2f's co bracket. So if I come back to the previous uh, statement, if you consider the co bracket, this part q, depending on phi, will disappear. So it will be formal. So the, there is a formula, and to be more specific, the co-bracket that you get is a, a construction due to Schedler, which has to do with quivers. And it is a Schedler co-bracket for a quivers, uh, a shape, uh, uh, star shape quivers uh, with uh, uh, P, uh, P edges, like this. Maybe I should not write the name, Schedler. OK. And my last comment before uh, commenting the proof is to tell you how a small phi is determined by capital phi. So recall that capital phi is a group-like element. So if I take the log, uh, I get uh, a least series uh, in two variables, a and b. And in this least series, I can uh, isolate the part which is linear in b. So I obtain uh, just those coefficients. And what uh, is the fourth? The series small phi is essentially this series, given by the same coefficients. So consequence, uh, because recall that, uh, re uh, remember that phi was a solution of, a, of an equation in terms of Bernoulli numbers. 
we obtain that the, those coefficients of any reinforced oscillators, Qn, which corresponds to the linear part in B, are given by Bernoulli numbers. And the second consequence is that uh, if your oscillator that you started with is even, so which means that uh, it only consists of monomials of even length, then the series small phi does not depend anymore on the oscillator. It's just given by Bernoulli numbers. So you get a, a simple formal description of a QRF map with no strange values, uh, with no strange complex numbers. Or rational numbers. Just Bernoulli numbers. And um, so this result that uh, some coefficients of the drill oscillators are just Bernoulli numbers is something which is known. So it is due to Drinfeld when phi is a Kishnik Samoljikov oscillators. And it has been later generalized by uh, my, my colleague from Strasbourg, Enriquez, who proved this for any oscillator. So this, this identity is in fact something well known. And it appears here as a consequence of what I did. Uh, okay, so maybe, uh, yes. So in relation with, with uh, his work, it can also be proved that the series phi defined by this uh, formula is in fact essentially the same thing as what he calls the gamma function. So the definitions are not the same, but they give the same series, essentially. And just one example to conclude uh, this part is that uh, if you take the KZ associators, the gamma function is uh, what you expect, so given by the values of the zeta function. So in general, it is not an odd series. You can have uh, some coefficients in even degrees. OK. So now I think I have uh, maybe five minutes, or maybe even more. Sorry? Okay. So I will, I will spend them uh, by just giving an idea of the proof, and I, then I will stop. Uh, and I will just give the main, uh, the main ingredient. So recall that we have to, to prove that this diagram is commutative. Okay, so there is this uh, uh, self intersection map, UVEC. Those two formal operations, D on Q, Q depends on the, on the oscillators and the spatial expansions defined by the conservation integral. So the main ingredient, which I will uh, uh, explain in, in the next and last slide, is that there is a, a three-dimensional cabling, cabling um, formula for QRF map UVEC. And this is a key uh, ingredient of the proof, in fact. So I will explain it in the last slide. The next uh, observation, or first reminder, that recall that UVEC is not an arbitrary operation, it is a quasi-derivation ruled by the intersection pairing eta. And in fact, uh, uh, we can give a formal description of eta similar to what I explained in the case of a surface with one boundary component. So this was done by Vladimir and myself in an unpublished work, and uh, also by Kawazumi and Kuno. And in the two cases, we used, in fact, uh, the case of, of, of a surface with one boundary component. So there is a way to, uh, to deduce the case of a puncture disk from this. So if we have this, uh, it's because uh, all of them then are quasi-derivations, D, Q, and UVEC, it's enough to prove the commutativity of the, of the diagram and the generators of this algebra. Um, T hat on, 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 on K, yes, because each of them is a quasi-derivation for some fog spirits. And this computation, so it's where the, you have to, to, to work, uh, it's, um, it's, it is done, uh, it works because Z has two fundamental properties. So first, first of all, it behaves well under cabling of, of components of a tangle, or in this case, it's just breadth. And the second uh, property is that it's a universal Vassiliev invariant. So it gives you an isomorphism between um, the Maltsev completion of the, of the pure wave group and uh, the, the drinfeld quenoli algebra. And this universality is uh, fundamental to prove this. OK. And uh, now you can wonder what happened for our other surfaces. So I expect the same proof to work for any surface. So in, for any surface of genus G, we say with one boundary component, we have to replace spatial expansions by symplectic expansions. And in fact, there are two ways to construct uh, uh, symplectic expansions from Drinfeld oscillators. 
So the first way is to use uh, a TQFT, which we uh, introduced with uh, Keptea and Abiro, and which is derived from the lame water myotopin variant. So you can produce, produce some sympathetic expansion from them, and so that, that depends on, on the green facilitators. And the other possibility, which is in fact related to this one in some way, is to use a theory of elliptic associators, uh, which is uh, currently uh, done by, by Enriquez. But uh, there is, a, in the proof, there is a, a difficulty, at least for the LMO functor uh, way, there is a, a difficulty about them, which I have not been able to overcome yet. Okay, so then I will now conclude with this uh, three-dimensional formula, which I, I mentioned for, for MUVEC. So um, you, we have to, because we, the concentration integral is an invariant of grades, and the, the map MUVEC is a, is a loop intersection operation, we have to transform loops into breads. Okay. And uh, so we consider our any surface uh, sigma. So again, pi is a fundamental group. Pi back is a fundamental group of the unit tangent bundle. And I pick two points, u and v, in the interior of sigma. And I can thus consider the purebred groups on two strings based on those two points, pb2 sigma. So now, uh, the group pi, the fundamental group of the surface sigma, can be embedded into the fundamental group of the surface minus the point v. And this group, pi v, is actually a free product, a copy of pi, and the, copy, uh, the, 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 free, uh, the free group generated by the, by the generator zv. So I have this projection, pv, onto pi. And finally, uh, the fundamental group of sigma minus v can be regarded as a subgroup of the pure bread group. It consists of those breads, uh, u, uh, strand u and v, whose strand uh, v, no, sorry, strand u, uh, yes, v, is straight vertical. And the strand u does something in the surface and maybe wins around the straight, uh, the strand v. So we have all this, those embeddings. And uh, if you exchange the roles of u and v, you get similar embeddings, uh, 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 similar notations. And here is a formula. So we consider an element uh, IVEC or PIVEC. And uh, we regard this element as a, a bread just with one string, but framed. And then because it is framed, we can uh, double it so we obtain two strands pure red, and we multiply to it uh, two copies of A inverse, one on the strand U and one on the strand V. So the picture here that you can see is a, is a diagram for pure red on two strands. And this pure red has uh, the peculiarity that if you remove one of the two strands, it becomes trivial. So in particular, it's, you can regard it as an element of pi V. So pi v, you can then apply the Fox derivative with respect to zv. So you get an element of z pi v, and you can project onto pi, and uh, the result is actually the QRF operations. So this is a three-dimensional interpretation of QRF uh, operations. And then the, the proof which I, evoke, which I sketch uh, in the previous slide consists in, uh, in trying to apply, z, apply, apply the, the concept integral to this formula. And it's, it's quite topological, right? and uh, and that's what that's what I wanted to explain.